good afternoon one and all uh, today's uh, alleviate webinar topic is going to be cancer pain palliative care and end of life care so i am dr khaja jawad khan consultant uh, pain and palliative physician at alleviate pain and spine clinic so today's topic is uh, a complex uh, topic i'll try to make it a bit uh, simple for you all <clears throat> cancer pain is uh, one such thing which is associated in most of the patients suffering from this very difficult problem and uh, there are differences between cancer pain and palliative care end of life care etc which we have to understand but more importantly let's first look into cancer pain all right so cancer associated pain is one of the most debilitating aspect of the disease itself there are lack of effective treatment options right uh, medications can be utilized and then uh, nowadays we have few recent developments also like radio frequency technology intrathecal pumps spinal cord stimulators etc okay now coming to the cancer pain per se what we need to understand over here is uh, whenever there is cancer pain we have to understand where the cancer pain is coming from okay for that reason uh, depending on what kind of cancer it is the different kind of treatments are there for example if someone is suffering from a cancer of the upper part of the abdomen like stomach pancreas etc that time what we do is we target certain nerves which are going to uh, take painful signals from the stomach and the upper abdominal area one of such nerves is called the splanchnic plexus which uh, diagram you can see over here we can see the greater splanchnic nerve lesser splanchnic and the least splanchnic nerve so what we do in cancer related pain interventions is that we are going to target these particular nerves so the splanchnic nerves they are derived from the thoracic sympathetic ganglion they, they are of three kinds greater lesser and least splanchnic nerve now what are they going to innervate they are the git the upper abdomen as i was mentioning stomach pancreas liver etc now we use a fluoroscopy technique to do this uh, procedure this is a patient who was suffering from pancreatic cancer in whom we are doing this intervention and in this intervention we are doing the splanchnic plexus block so here you can see this is the fluoroscopic guided technique what we use and we do the procedure okay now whenever we are doing a radio frequency ablation remember radio frequency ablation is a technique wherein we are utilizing current to produce thermal energy or heat to selectively burn those particular nerves resulting in pain relief okay now whenever we are doing any technique there are complications few of the complications of this technique are injury of the surrounding structures like for example we have the intercostal vessels and nerves injury to them injury to the pleura resulting in pneumothorax we have the thoracic nerve roots nerve injury thoracic duct on the left side resulting in calothorax etc now if you look at the literature it says that for <clears throat> upper abdominal pain the radio frequency ablation or splanchnic now so t10 t11 was very effective okay so moving ahead few of the patients can present with cancers of the face and the oral cavity so head and neck related cancers whenever they are there trigeminal neuralgia can be one of the associated symptoms so trigeminal ganglion whenever it is involved it results in a very sharp shooting pain across the face resulting in trigeminal neuralgia this is associated with cancer related pain so what we do in this trigeminal neuralgia again we do the radio frequency ablation technique wherein we are going to visualize the foramen ovale which is seen over here as the hole and we are going to do the lesion moving ahead uh, sphenopalatine ganglion involvement can also be there and for that also we do the sphenopalatine ganglion radio frequency ablation 
Okay. For cancers involving the lung and the pleura, the chest, thorax, region, etc., we do something called as a T2, T3 sympathetic block. So this technique, what we are going to do again, uh, we are going to target the T2, T3 sympathetic ganglions, which are a chain of uh, sympathetic nerve fibers, which take the painful signals on the sides of the vertebral cord. Okay. Next. Whenever there is cancer involving the, you know, uh, cancer pain affecting the legs, the lower uh, buttock area, the leg region, the foot region, etc. We plan on doing the lumbar sympathetic block. Same like the thoracic sympathetic, the lumbar sympathetic are also present. They are nothing but the continuation again and they are present on the side of the vertebral cord. So what we do over here is we identify the target vertebra, be it L3 or L4, etc. And then we are going to reach the lumbar sympathetic chain, which is present on the lateral border of the vertebral bodies. So these are the specific locations for L2, L3 and L4. Next, whenever there is cancer related pain affecting the lower part of the pelvic region, for example, cancers arising from the uterus, in the perineum, the rectum, the pelvis, etc. Then what we have to do is we have to target the nerves which carry the painful signals from this particular region. So what we do is we do something called as a ganglion impar block, wherein we are going to target the uh, painful nerves which carry the painful signals from this lower pelvic region. Remember, the important thing about all these interventions is that we are going to target the specific points and then we are going to take away the painful signals. So this is basically broadly about cancer pain management. Now coming to palliative care. Palliative care we do when especially, for example, someone is having cancer and it has been confirmed that they are having cancer. And when the cure for that cancer is very difficult. Whenever someone gets cancer, a simple thing is uh, the treatment of the cancer itself is the first most primary thing. So what we do in this case is either a chemotherapy or either a surgical option, etc. Right, to eliminate the cancer from the body. Whenever this is not happening, for example, the cancer is crossed a particular stage wherein no treatment is possible. That time what we do is, we do something called as palliative care. Now palliative care is basically wherein we are going to uh, reduce the pain. We are going to reduce the suffering of the patient to such an extent that they can at least lead a peaceful life. They can at least lead a better quality of life. This is what palliative care is mainly about. Coming to the third part, that is the end of life care. Usually what happens is, whenever patients are suffering from cancer, this is a chronic debilitating illness, wherein the not only taking care of the patient, but taking care of the patient's relatives and attenders becomes equally very, very important. So what is important over here is making them a part of the management plan. Counseling is very, very important. And whenever uh, the patients who are in a very terminally ill stage of cancer, many of a time uh, end of life care, that is after the patient has expired, this becomes very, very important. Taking care of the last rites of the deceased patient, doing counseling of the patient's attenders, all of this becomes very important. So, the important thing over here, what we need to understand is cancer related pain, we can manage with the help of certain interventions, etc. But for palliative and end of life care, a more personal touch is what is very, very important. So uh, to conclude, what I would say is radiofrequency ablation is one of the 
safe and useful adjunctive treatment options for cancer pain. It eliminates the need for pain medications. Now, whenever there is cancer-related pain, we have certain options in hand, like radiofrequency ablation, pain medication, etc. But for palliative care and end of life care, it becomes very important to include the patient, the patient's extended family and relatives into the entire management plan. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.